you saw my last video, yes, I moved some of my home lab stuff to the cloud. I know that a lot of people are like, hey, hold on a second. Is it still called a home lab if it's in the cloud? And is it really in the cloud? <laughs> technically, I moved to data center. So technically, it's my own private cloud as it was before. Um, and a lot of people have asked, what the heck? Why did you do this? Kind of explained it in the video a little bit, but I, I think I should should clarify. Should clear up uh, clear up a lot of maybe misconceptions or maybe I didn't explain it properly. Um, but yes, I moved some servers into a data center uh, so that uh, 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 for a few reasons. Uh, one, uh, because first and foremost, <laughs> my one use servers weren't getting a lot of use. I have three Intel NUCs here uh, that run all of my Kubernetes workloads, all of my virtual machines, all of Proxmox, and they've been doing pretty good. So my one use servers have just kind of been collecting dust and I wanted to find something to do with them. I talked about a colo before, never really looked into it. At that same time, someone from Minnesota said, hey, I run a colo, we have some extra space, you're welcome to join. And so then the wheels started turning. I started thinking about all of the stuff I could do. Hey, I could, you know, put these one use servers in a co-location, see what that's all about, do some interesting stuff with public, you know, public networking uh, along with private networking. So a lot of networking stuff I get to figure out. And at the same time, try to figure out what hybrid kind of cloud means. And when I say hybrid, I, I, I'm more like multi, multi-site private cloud, I think is a, is a better way to put it. Uh, but it but it opens the doors for some interesting networking stuff and stuff like that. So anyways, don't don't fear. I still have a home lab. I still have all of my stuff. Basically, my home lab is exactly the way it was three weeks ago. It's just that the servers that were powered off are now powered on somewhere else. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, some people were like, you run a home lab channel. You can't put things where you want them. And I expect this to be a home lab channel. <laughs> I mean, not in those words, but that, that's the feeling I got. And I'm like, hey, this is my channel. I can do whatever I want. Anyways, uh, I, I appreciate uh, all the comments and all the stuff around that. I, I, I love that it drummed up a lot of excitement. Uh, and I'm excited for some of the stuff I get to try. Like, I, I get to try a lot of stuff. I, I was talking about this earlier in Discord, too, talking about some of uh, my networking challenges. Um, a lot of them I solved. But are there better ways to do it? And I think we were going back and forth in the networking channel and Discord a little bit earlier, uh, talking about some different ways we could uh, we could get this connected to to another uh, uh, another private cloud. So a lot of lot of cool lot of cool possibilities. And uh, I talked about some of them in the video towards the end. Uh, what I have already set up, you know, a site to site VPN, tried and true, uh, uh, versus going down the you know mesh network route with WireGuard and an overlay network. So. A lot of new stuff to figure out. So, so I'm excited. I'm excited. It, it also opens a, a lot of possibilities for things I've already been thinking about. Like, hey, you know, some of my workloads are actually running here at home, but they're only exposed, you know, uh, uh, only exposed through an exit node and wire guard. Uh, sorry, tail scale, you know, in 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 the, the colo. So a lot of cool stuff. A lot of cool stuff. So I don't know. Uh, that's 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 going to be what I figure out over the next couple of weeks. So Anyways, uh, if you have something you want to share, throw it in. Let's talk about it. It's not just me blabbing the whole time. Well, it will be me blabbing the whole time, but it'll be about your stuff. How about that? <laughs> so anyways, uh, let's start from the top and uh, let's work our way down. Oh, one more thing. If you are new here, I usually go roughly an hour. Uh, I just want to be uh, respectful of your time, Moz time and everyone's time. And plus, uh, you know, after that, I kind of I, I, I yell so much. This, <laughs> this kind of is my normal talking voice uh kind of sort of but uh it's 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 a little bit louder so anyways i usually go for about an hour we'll we'll try to wrap it up in about an hour but there's more to talk about we'll go a little over there's less to talk about we'll go a little less that's usually how it goes usually when i say that it, it runs way over so anyways let's see what you guys are up to cyber night how's it going good afternoon cleaning up cleaning up some services and migrating some containers in today's effort here hey <laughs> That's like that's like my life all the time, cleaning up some services, migrating some containers. That's that's the story of my life. Story of my life. Yeah, I, I just started to do a little bit of a migration of some stuff, 
uh, to 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 uh, what do I, what do I even want to call? I'm just gonna keep calling it Colo because that's that one sounds cooler, and two, it's easier to remember than my private cloud in a data center close by. So, uh, but I yeah I, I I'm I'm right there with you. I started doing something similar here a little bit. Started migrating a few things to my Colo just to see you know just to kind of test the waters. And plus, I I still want to have like a play environment there too. And that's something that this is going to really open up the gates for too is having a play environment you know somewhere else and a play environment here too so you know i i kind of have my you know my home production and i'll have my public production but i'll also have my home play and my public play so it's it's going to be fun it's going to be fun i say public it, it is a private cloud but my workloads will be publicly exposed so Basically, my documentation stuff won't be hosted out of my house anymore, and that has multiple benefits. <laughs> One, because I notice I get blocked. I must be on some, my IP must be on someone's block list somewhere, uh, because sometimes when I go to some websites, I'm blocked, and I'm like, "Yep, I, I know that's I know why. I, I ended up on someone's you know block list because I'm hosting something externally, and I probably shouldn't be." But hopefully, that clears up. Pizza Geek, how's it going? Good to see you. Yo, get day. How's it going, Pizza Geek? Uh, lesser train afternoon any suggestions of chrome casting between vlans on pfsense uh, on the struggle br uh, bus right now but glad to be here hey lesser train um the only suggestion i have well i have two suggestions um it, it is possible i i've been able to do it with my udm pro and the way that my udm says to do it is to turn on something called mdns multicast dns um I think that PFSense has an implementation of multicast DNS, and it's actually way better than the one Unify has. Uh, Unify added it way late. So if if, 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 if you're having troubles, uh, which you probably are, you said it, um, on, on, on your IoT network or whatever your device is on, turn on MDNS. And then, you know, I always get confused. Do I turn on MDNS on the network that I'm on or the target network? I end up turning on both. I should figure that out one day. Uh, but turn on MDNS. That should that hopefully will solve your problems. I know it will for Apple devices, and I I know it will for Chrome devices uh, for the most part because I can I can Chromecast to my Chromecast audio from Spotify on my phone. It's it's all weird uh, with that setting turned on. I haven't done a PF since, but that should work. There's another one called IGP IGMP snooping that is also supposed to help, but I, I've never needed it. I've never needed that. Uh, I have toggled that setting on and off. Uh, hasn't had any effect i think that's to to help limit the broadcast uh but i've never needed it so give that a shot uh piece of key. yeah move move devices to the same vlan yeah that uh, that'll absolutely help that'll 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 clear up everything that'll clear up everything it, it, if that's what you want to do absolutely do it uh makes things a lot easier it does for sure it does for sure and I, i'm guilty of that and i i had to do that with you know some of my uh apple tvs and, and i had to put them on same network as everything else because it was just way too complicated to create all those firewall rules uh, and it wasn't always the most stable thing when i had it on another vlan so but chromecast was i i have chromecast audio still at home those little puck devices that they don't sell anymore i actually love them i wish they would because you could hook it up to any receiver and basically create a sonos uh with these little 20 dollars puck devices that they don't sell anymore everybody wants to put everything inside of a speaker and then put a microphone in it take it out of the microphone <laughs> take the microphone out take the speaker out just give me a little puck and let me plug that into my own audio equipment that's that's my that's my uh my wish zvsd hmm prime not auto renewing is annoying yeah been in the garage pretending to be a woodworker hey i saw that in discord i saw that in discord that looks awesome pretending you you know what's going on you know what's going on i know you know what's going on but uh yeah prime sub not auto renewing it is is so it's so lame it's so lame it's it's i kind of get it but i don't you know it's amazon's way of basically not spending money it's amazon's way of making sure everybody comes back on twitch at least once a month or thinks about twitch at least once a month it's kind of a it's it's kind of dumb because it's part of your amazon Prime benefits and they shouldn't they shouldn't you know limit you on your auto renews but you could see how that could go <laughs> really bad for a long time i mean you could have you, you know you could have your whole entire prime sub uh auto renew on someone that y you picked three years ago to me that just says okay yeah why not but amazon says yeah nope not gonna happen hey everyone Sigor. hey how's it going good to see you 
Uh, PC Geek, much easier. Yeah, it was definitely much easier if you put it on the same VLAN. Xavius D, woot. PC Geek, uh, don't think you can do this across VLANs. Yeah, typically you don't, but I think we talked about the MDNS. MDNS will help, I think. Uh, that's that's the way I solved it. Uh, let's see, Xavius D. Uh, oh, we're talking about this anyway. Uh, so, by the way, I vote for uh, Makers as the new section. Yeah, so I, I was going to mention this, but I wasn't sure. I was like, no one would have context, but you supplied something. Now I got to supply the context. So, so yeah, so one of the one of the discussions earlier in Discord was we have a 3D printers channel, super active, right? And it's full of makers, you know, it's I feel like that's kind of the modern term for anyone who makes anything physical. Um, and uh, and so uh, I think Xavier D asked, hey, we should have a woodworking channel. And I, I think that's a, I think that's a that's a good idea. I, the, 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 the Venn diagram of people who like home labs and woodworking is is, is huge <laughs> it's huge there's a big overlap there I've, i'm learning a couple of them too gaming too is another one uh but anyways and then i think manny from our discord server said hey uh, like let's what about makers and i, I kind of like that idea too so you're you're voting for makers i kind of like that too i i like that too uh it, you know uh will everyone understand it maybe not right away uh, but I, I do think that's that's kind of the more common modern term for anyone who makes physical things. I think I think it's I think it's typically physical. I think creators is is the the digital term. Maybe I don't know. It's uh, it's kind of confusing. Well, like what's the difference between a creator and a maker? I I think it's physical, but I don't know. I don't know. Just thinking this off the top of my head. Hey, real quick, uh, uh, Lubix, thanks for the follow, and Sam Gain, twenty six, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Good day. Uh, built my first TrueNAS host. Uh, what a breeze to set up with Proxmox and TrueNAS. I agree. I thought it was going to be super complicated. <laughs> Tim, have you managed to use the replication feature? Um, so Git Day, I haven't because I think that's that's a TrueNAS premium. I don't know what they call that premium thing. I think that's, you know, uh, a, a TrueNAS premium. That's what I'm going to call it. Feature where uh, uh, if you're talking about uh, replication of, of, oh, Maybe. So replication, have I done replication with ZFS? Yes, I have, if you're talking about that. So if I done ZFS replication, you better believe it. I did it for a while. I used to have one set of disks for my main pool, one set of disks for my backup pool, and I would do ZFS replication. Basically take lots of snapshots on my main pool and then replicate those snapshots down to my backup pool. Now I don't have enough space for that. And I've been debating like, you know, building up another server to do that. Uh, but if you're talking about like HA stuff and replication that way, yeah, that's a true NAS paid feature. Uh, but ZFS replication, yeah, yeah, it, it actually works really great. It actually works really great. And what I would do if I were you, if you're going to do it, is either get another server and do it, or if you have enough drives in the same server, I think that's the best way to do it because then you don't have another server on all the time. And it's lightning fast because you don't have to go through the network. But set up a set up a, 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 a you know a, a task to take snapshots. Uh, do it every 15 minutes. It doesn't matter. You could do it every minute if you want. That seems a little excessive. But really, it's just going to be the diff between before and after. So like, why wait a day? Why wait an hour? Why not do it 15 minutes? Because uh, then you get uh, something to roll back to. Anyways, that aside, set that up, uh, and then replicate uh, those snapshots between pools. Uh, sorry, set up the second pool, and then that will be your target for snapshots. That's the way I've done it. I haven't done it between machines, though. I haven't done it between machines. Uh, Gladian, hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Um, waiting on the new uh, <laughs> Discord discussion section. Yeah, all right. Discussion. All right. I can add that, too. Uh, lesser drink. Ah, yeah, trying to avoid that. I've been uh, seeing things from Tom Lawrence about Avahi. Yeah, but haven't had success with it yet. And I think what Avahi is, is MDNS, maybe? Uh, but that's 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 your keyword to search for. MDNS. PFSense. I don't know if it's there, but those are the keywords. That 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 will solve everything. That will solve everything if you can get that working. Uh, Romeo Jr., happy Saturday, y'all. Hey, good to see you. Good to see you, Romeo Jr. PC Geek, what are you working on? PC Geek says, I'm upgrading my streaming PC, now making that old system possibly into a Proxmox server. It's a Ryzen 7 3800X AM4 with 32 gigs of DDR4, 3200 megahertz. Oh, nice and fast RAM. The board is a ROG Strix uh, B450, so ASUS, uh, two by 16 PCIe, three dados, nice, and more. Uh, might be a good secondary server. If it'll work out, I could just upgrade the RAM at most to 128 gigs, which is really good. Uh, the Fractal Design R7 case, uh, it, it 
it's in has whoa 10 10 3.5 base yeah this is this is kind of like this is kind of like the best case scenario for 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 a, a another home lab server right because you got uh one it's amd uh two uh lots of space uh for drives as you just mentioned 10 drives you could fit in there it sounds awesome then you can get up to 128 gigs of ram that's pretty good on a consumer board especially for now that's something that's like you know your your your, <laughs> your uh old system and then on top of that you have two uh two i thought it said three but two 16 pi pcies uh 3.0s and more but still that's great because because most systems nowadays you know only come with <laughs> one maybe two <laughs> That sounds awesome. That sounds awesome. What are you going to put on it? What are you going to put on it? Proxmox, I, I assume. That's what you said. Uh, Yocto, last minute prep before I give a Seth Plus OpenStack tutorial in the Craft Computing Discord. Funny, I was just thinking about this. Uh, hoping to give one of the... Yeah, yeah. Hoping to give one in the Techno Dim Discord if there's interest in, in it. Yes, Yocto. Yes, let's make it happen. Let's make it happen. I'll create an event. We'll set it up. Whatever time works for you. And uh, yeah, I'd, I'd love to be there. It's funny you mentioned that because just yesterday, last night, I was like, I think it's time to like look at OpenStack again. You know, I, I know the promise of OpenStack, uh, really it's to treat uh, everything like cattle and have one pane of glass for your hyper-converged infrastructure. And I can't, you know, every time I think about it, I was like, yeah, it sounds interesting, sounds interesting. Why, why do I still do Proxmox when I could do, you know, <laughs> when I could do OpenStack where I then have control over everything instead of rolling my own solutions after that. But so that's the, that's the thought that goes through my head probably every three months. And I'm like, oh, how, how's OpenStack doing? So yes, Yakto, I, I would love to make that happen. Let me know what works for you, and uh, we can set it up. We can, I'll, I'll create an event in Discord, and uh, you you can have the stage. And I'd, I'd love to join because I'd love to know more. So, yeah, just, just let me know. Just let me know. I'll, I'd be there. Uh, let's see. After consideration. I like it. After consideration. So, after consideration, I just got my Cloudflare tunnel working uh, to access my Proxmox VMs and four Pies. That is awesome. So, so you have, uh, you, you're, you're, you're using Proxmox. You have VMs and four pies, and then from there you set up a Cloudflare tunnel with your Cloudflare account, so that uh, people can proxy from the outside in to you. That is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, sounds like fun. Sounds like fun for sure. Sounds like fun. Yeah. What a, what a nice free service, Cloudflare. Man, man. If that ever goes away, I'll be I'll be pretty upset. At least the free tier. I know people are like, wow, well, the free tier doesn't have a ton of stuff, but just having. Just having that proxy there and tunnels, you know, HTTP tunnels, uh, is a lot. I, I feel like that's a lot. They're giving away a lot for free. ZVSD, I don't use either, but I would uh, for sure watch, attend your presentation so I can learn and see if I need to use it. Yeah, I, I'm there with you. I'm there with you. I, I, same way. I, I keep, like I was saying, I keep trying to convince myself that there's something there, but maybe I'm not seeing everything I need to see. I did look to see, like, you know, of course I'm going to look into, like, Kubernetes support, and that seemed like it was a plugin. I don't know, a plugin or an add-on or a module. I forget what they call them. And that's where I was kind of like, okay, like, I, I want first-class Kubernetes support. Like, I want this thing baked into the product if I was ever going to consider it. Because <laughs> to me, that's hyper-converged. So, yeah, I keep, I keep, I for some reason, I'm a sucker for, like, anything hyper-converged. Because anytime I can just, like, control everything in one system... To me, that sounds like uh, sounds like a lot of fun, and I don't mean going all the way down to you know what what services I use, but if I could have a system that would solve storage, plus virtualization, plus containers, plus Kubernetes, that sounded pretty interesting to me, because that's all I do. <laughs> so every time someone has something to say about hyperconverged, you know, my my eyes and ears uh kind of perk up so uh, yeah i'd love to i'd love to see it i'd love to i'd, I'd be there for sure i I'd, I'd, uh, i'm happy to make it happen modest tim how's it going happy saturday modest tim uh working on talk oh i forget tick wait talk alert talk oh i forgot what new product you're working on uh but i hope it's going well i hope it's going well good to see you uh gold coast hey everyone uh fresh talk thank you they they thank you fresh talk i knew i had talk in the name and i knew it had to do with alerts and alerting alerting when creators had certain actions or maybe the other way around anyways i hope it's going well 
Gold Coast. Hey, everyone. Finally got my bamboo uh, lab. Uh, P1s. Yeah, P printer this week. Huge upgrade from the Ender. Oh, Gold Coast. Yeah, a lot of people have been talking about um, bamboo labs, uh, printers, uh, in our 3D printing channel, maybe soon to be the Maker's channel. And uh, is, 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 is this the one to buy? Is this the one to buy at least right now? Like today, if you go and buy one, is this the one to buy? And and I know that's 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 opinionated, you know. It's it's qualitative. Like, hey, it's the one to buy if what? Is this the one to buy if I don't want to tweak a million things, or is this the one to buy if I do want to tweak a million things? Because I I see that a lot. Like, people are like, I want something that's just like works out of the gate and is the best of the best. And then some people are like. Yeah, I want to buy this because I can customize everything and do everything that I want. That was one of the things I didn't really understand about 3D printers when I first started reading about them. I was always like, why are people like upgrading on 3D printer, upgrading parts on 3D printers when they just bought the thing? Like to me, that was like, I was like, I, 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 I don't get it. But now I, now I totally get it. So, but I don't know brands <laughs> and I'm not really great uh, when it comes to parts either. But I want to know, like, is this the one you... Is this the one you buy in Upgrade, or is this the one that just like, hey, it just works. Don't need to touch or adjust everything. It's great. It's great. All right. Uh, Glider. Glider. Uh, let's see. Glider. Hey, Techno Tim. If I want to self-host a blog uh, that posts podcast, how would I go about adding RSS so that people may sub subscribe? Yeah, good question. Two things. Um. There, there, oh, so one, there are self-hosted podcast options, right? There are self-hosted podcast options um, that will let you post RSS. Because at the end of the day, a podcast feed, so, it's, so, so if you just think of your feed, a podcast feed is really just, you know, XML. It's an RSS feed, as you mentioned there, uh, that tells people metadata about each podcast, where to get the, the podcast itself, where to get the file, and where to download it. So if you just want an RSS feed, there are plenty of products that do that. There are plenty, plenty of things where you could just like, hey, here's my site.xml or here's my podcast.xml and you could host just that, right? But if you wanted more of like, you know, to allow people to, to go to a site and look at the podcast episodes and maybe listen to them there or look at images from there, there are some self-hosted options out there. I can't remember off the top of my head, uh, but I will, uh, if you ping me in Discord, I'll ping you the one that I looked at way back in the day when I was considering doing the same thing. But Awesome Self-Hosted should have it there. If you go to Awesome Self-Hosted on GitHub, do a find all, control F, command F, podcast, I think you're going to find it. The only thing is, I, I wish I wish they would sort uh, Awesome Self-Hosted by stars. Not that stars are everything, but at the same time, it's just, it's like in alphabetical order. It's like, ain't nobody got time to click through 30 things. <laughs> Anyways, uh, but yeah, so you have a couple of options. Plain old, plain old RSS feed uh, would, would work fine, but I think you're wanting some more metadata and some more content around that. So, so yeah, uh, if you can't find it, ping me in Discord, and I'll let you know if that's the one I was looking at too. Uh, Cybet, hey, thanks for the Prime sub. 25 months, let's go, man. A uh, year and one month. Thank you so much. Yakto sounds interesting. Yeah, I am too. I am too. I want to hear more for sure. Uh, this is a different can camera angle. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, talk about close up with the mic boom. Yeah, yeah. It's so close up that may if I could just maybe I can I can get the angle just right so that, uh, I'd be way over there. It would actually be like over here where the camera is. not If I had the boom arm just right so you you couldn't even see the arm, you would just see the mic. That would actually be pretty interesting. But I'm very limited to what I can do here. But yeah. <laughs> I, that's the nice thing about having this camera and arm. It's just like, oh, do I want to show more of this or this? Do I want to hide the thing that's back on my desk right now or not? It is hidden. <laughs> it's double hidden uh, because because of stuff. XVSD, I actually got back in from the garage and was posting on Facebook in the woodworking group. Perfect timing. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. I'd love to see it. I, I, I know a lot of people are into woodworking. PC Geek is, iLoot is, like so many people. Like, like I was saying, the Venn diagram for home lab and, and woodworking is like is like this. I don't know what it looks like, but there's a huge overlap for it, for sure. Uh, I, I enjoy it too. I'm not great. I'm not great at it. I've, I've done a bunch of IKEA hacks where I've stained and painted stuff and, you know, replaced hardware. I think turned out pretty good. 
Uh, but when it comes to cutting and measuring stuff and then nailing it together, I'm not so great. <laughs> not so great. Uh, let's see. Uh, Undercurve TV just set up a pterodactyl server. Hey, congratulations. That is hard. I'm not lying. It is super hard, especially if you go the Docker way because of Docker networking and the way that that agent is set up and the way that they expose stuff. It's a little bit complicated. But if you have it up and going, congratulations. I'm, I'm going to say this here, but if you're having a problem making the green heart green and the green heart is red, uh, search your Discord for green heart. <laughs> Those exact words. Uh, and you'll see all of the solutions for it. Uh, a lot of people... I've gotten to the point where, hey, my my heart on 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 pterodactyl, you know, isn't green. It's 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 red, and it usually is a cores issue. Spoiler alert! But there are some solutions on how to fix it. But that is awesome. That aside, I'm going into like, you know, fix it mode versus like celebrating this uh, this uh, this uh, <laughs> accomplishment, which it is. But that's awesome. Let me know what what games are you gonna run. I'm betting. I'm betting. I'm betting Minecraft. That that's an easy one. That's an easy one. And Pal World. I'm going Minecraft and Pal World. One or the other. Or both. Why not both? <laughs> man, I, I would love to host game servers. I keep saying this, but man, I would love to host game servers. If anybody wants a game server and they want to play it and they don't want to host it, let me know. I'll spin it up. I'll spin it up soon. And it'll be in Kubernetes and it'll be up and going. Just let me know. Uh, cool web, uh, working on a home theater PC for PC emulation and PS2 GameCube games. Yeah, that sounds awesome. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, I love it. I love it. A home theater PC. I, man, I've been, I've been in this game for so long, so long doing home theater PC stuff. Um, even back to windows media center XP edition. I always wish there was an easy way. I, I think it's a lot easier now. But if there was a way to combine my media plus games, and I think Plex tried to do something, I wish they would have. They, I wish they would have continued on that. But uh, I wish there was a way for like media plus. You know, if if Jellyfin also made like a game browser, you know, where I could browse and play any of the emulated games that I have. Oh, that'd be so awesome. Because uh, I, I get it that they're 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 you know they're, they're they're always separated they're always separated. But when you think about what you do with your TV, for the most part, it's going to be consuming content or playing games. <laughs> and if if someone like Jellyfin or someone would combine both of those, oh, that would be that would be a home run. But I don't know. Plex tried to do it and it wasn't a home run. So who knows? <laughs> I bet it's so hard. Uh, be horny. Hey, nice seeing you. Nice seeing you too. <laughs> Uh, I am Utpa. How's it going? Uh, I've installed uh, GitLab CE and Docker containers, but it was heavy on resources. So I switched to Git T with drone and CICD pipelines. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure. Yeah, GitLab CE. Yeah, it, it can be heavy on resources. One, because I think they include, yeah, they, they just include a lot of stuff. Yeah, Git T and, and, and drone is, is a perfect combo. Perfect combo. I'm, I'm so glad to see like Git T continuing to evolve and gain mindshare. I went, I actually went to their site last night too to check up on them. And uh, they, they had a nice section on like, you know, some of the best teams in the world depend on us or something like that. And, you know, Google was listed and stuff like that. It's like, ah, oh, that, that is awesome. That is awesome. Uh, Cause I was looking into some more CI stuff. Anyways, that is awesome. What are you gonna do with it? So, so are you gonna automate uh, uh, some of your GitOps stuff? Like, are you gonna automate deploying infrastructure, or are you gonna automate uh, deploying some code, building containers? Why not both? That's what I say. <laughs> uh, concise, concise toileb. Hey, sorry for bothering you. I wanted to. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh, let's see. Uh, desabotage. Just got a UDMSE for my new uh, place. Shiz gonna be lit. <laughs> All right, man. So you just got a new UDMSE for your new place. Yeah, it's uh, it's pretty awesome. I, I think it's awesome. For me, at least. For sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, let's see. I'm Upa. I've recently installed Zorin OS 17 on my main laptop as a main OS after testing Proxmox. Loving it so far. Yeah. I haven't tried Zorin. I keep hearing the name. Keep hearing the name. And... Uh, uh, Sounds awesome to me. Is it Debian based? I don't even know that. I should know more. I, it's probably not. It, it probably is Debian based or whatever. Okay, let's see. Uh, nut, nothing, nothing fancy. Desabotage. You're gonna love it. I agree. I agree. I, I agree. <laughs> like if you're in the ecosystem and you're excited about it, yeah, you are gonna love it. 
Um, muffin. Muffin Top Man. <laughs> muffin Top Man. Uh, yep. Uh, got the snow yesterday in Wisconsin. Oh, yeah. All right. So you, you're a little bit east. I don't know how far east you are of me, but pretty close. Pretty close. We're neighbors. Um, yeah. So, so yeah, we're going to get some snow, and you're going to probably get it a little bit later. You're probably maybe a couple hours delayed. So I, I hear we're getting some today. I think. I haven't checked my weather lately, uh, but I think we are. And I'm not going to get distracted by looking at weather again. Uh, babe, babe salad. I like it. Babe salad. Uh, trying to find the right way to deploy HA Postgres in Kubernetes. Is there a community consensus on Postgres HA Bitnami chart? There, I think there is, and it's not to use that one. How about that one? <laughs> How about that one? I think me, at least for me, and a lot of other people are using cloud native PG. It's kind of hard to find, and I think they don't have great SEO because it's called cloud native PG and uh, CPNG for short. Yep. Uh, they don't have great SEO, so it doesn't pop up a lot of places. Uh, but C, CP, Cloud, CNPG, Cloud Native Postgres, uh, is what I go with. I've been using it for, I don't know, over a year now. And uh, it's pretty awesome because you get HA out of the box. You get streaming walls uh, to, to, to stream your log and your transactions uh, to uh, like an object storage, Minio S3 type bucket, uh, to where you can restore your cluster in a couple of, I wouldn't say a couple of seconds. The act of starting the restore takes a couple seconds, then depending on your database sizes and all that could take a little bit longer. Uh, but it's pretty cool. It's HA, uh, it's HA, it'll, it'll do everything for you. <laughs> it'll do everything for you and it works great. And uh, I've had to restore that database, I mean, my own doing. I, I probably restored it 30 times. And it's as easy as just deleting, deleting all my, my pods, uh, or deleting the cluster, incrementing a number, a version number, and boom, it just says like, "Hey, I'm a, hey, I, 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 you know, I'm a, I'm a new, I'm a new cluster. I think, am I a new cluster? Let me go check. Let me check the version number. Yep, I'm a new cluster. Oh, I see the, uh, but I'm supposed to be the old cluster. Okay, let me restore all your data. Two minutes later, HA Postgres database clusters back up and going. It like it never happened. It, it is awesome. It is awesome. Been doing it for a long time. I all my databases are in Kubernetes now. And so, you know, I, I usually pick Bitnami ones for most of them. My Mongo's Bitnami, my SQL's Bitnami, uh, but but not my not my uh, not my Postgres. So yeah, check that out. Uh desabotage. Desabotage. I don't, I'm gonna go with desabotage. Man, I know I will, but it's good to hear from someone else. I know that that, that goes either way. We, you you put your neck out when you start talking about ubiquity sometimes, because you know it's, it, I I feel like it's, it's super polarizing. It's like the definition of polarizing. You know, it'd be like be like you know talking about Synology to to, to you know true NAS diehard fans. So <laughs> that too can get you into trouble. I know I live this every day. Uh, I've used that one. It works well. Yeah, yeah. So talking about the, yeah, easy to get going too. For sure, for sure. Uh, put a bed in the, put a bed in the data center, <laughs> and it's a home lab in my definition. I like it. I like that. Yeah, yeah. A lot of people were like, well, I was kind of tug in cheek too. Like, you know, did I move my whole home lab there? No, I only moved a couple of servers to really to explore you know, what co-locating means. And so a lot of people are like, that is not a home lab. It was like, <laughs> it's like that. Oh, that, uh, 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 I wish I, yeah, I'm going to create the meme sometime. Uh, but it's that Leonardo DiCaprio from, I forget what movie when he's like, that, you know, it's that meme with the beer and the cigarette in his hand. And I just want that meme saying, that's not a home lab, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and that's my meme for the last one. Uh, yeah, let's see. So, uh, Romeo Jr. Upgraded my six U rack to 15U, awesome. So I'm working on moving all of my network equipment and servers to that, awesome, that that sounds fun. That's a, To me, that sounds like a fun project uh, for a couple of reasons. One, new hardware, right? At least a, 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 new, a new beginning on something you have already. Sounds fun to me. Two, you know when you're done, kinda sorta. It's not open-ended, it's I move all this stuff into this new thing and I'm done. You know, maybe no software to change, nothing. It's just all hardware. It's, you know, something physical. You don't have to look at a screen to do anything. Sounds fun. And then for me personally, it's now I get to finally redo these cables the right way, <laughs> or at least a way I think works better in the future. So don't forget that part. Don't forget that part. Uh, for me personally, I, I usually buy way too many cables and then end up returning what I don't use. Uh, but cabling is a big part of that for me, for me. 
because I'm like, okay, this is a fresh start. I've already tore these cables out. I don't want to create a rat's nest in the second one. Uh, but, but, uh, but yeah, and then think of something that will scale in the future, you know, like, hey, what happens if I had three more servers here? Where do those cables go? You know, think about those things because that'll help you think about, okay, what do I do now uh, versus what am I going to have to redo later? But yeah, it sounds fun. I, I sometimes I wish I could do uh, some more, some more racking of stuff. Uh, let's see. Hey, babe, babe salad, babe salad. Hey, thanks for the, thanks for the sub. Appreciate it. Tier one new. Thanks, babe salad. Also sweet, uh, sweet avatar. You drinking a beer and your name is babe salad. I mean, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, Tim is making his competition to why? Yeah. YWS. Uh, there's no competition there. TTWS. Nah, nah, no one. YWS just sounds great. I mean, it sounds great. It just rolls off the tongue Two. Uh, there's there's no competition there's no competition i mean yakto has like four full racks in his server room which is his whole garage or half his garage or quarter of his garage he's got a big garage at least that's what i saw from the pictures he's got like 100 gigabit networking i mean he has a network core thing i don't even know what to call it that's like half the size of me and i'm pretty tall so <laughs> Yeah, no, no way. There's there's no competition there. There's no competition. He's doing real stuff. I'm, I'm doing fun stuff. Uh, Modest Tim, uh, now for the first and first show, show, show. Now first and foremost should be because it's cool. Oh, yeah. So I, I think this is about moving moving my stuff uh, out, 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 out to a data center, kind of sort of. But yeah, I agree. First and foremost should be because it's cool, because it's fun, because I want to do it. I agree. I agree. <laughs> uh, babe Salad, speaking of. Uh, did you integrate it with Cert Manager for TLS? Seems like it should be easy enough. Absolutely, yes, I did. But this is going back to, this is going back to, oh, Postgres. Oh, ah, ooh, no, no, I did not, and I should at some point. Uh, but I don't think, I, 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 I think the way that like like. So w w putting certificates in front of a database isn't as simple as like what you would do with the uh, reverse proxy, right? Well, with web traffic, right? Because that, that's HTTP traffic, you know, um, layer seven stuff. Whereas uh, with, with, with databases, it's, it's, it's lower level, it's TCP traffic. And so you can't put it through a reverse proxy. And, and so you can't, so you could put a load balancer in front of it but I think at the end of the day, you have to generate those certificates uh, uh, on uh, on Postgres or whatever's managing your Postgres connections. It's not as simple as just putting a certificate in front of it, uh, uh, like with maybe with Let's Encrypt. If you had a, yeah, it's tough because it's. I think it's a yeah. Uh, you can't put a reverse proxy in front of it. I know that for sure. Uh, and I I've tried to enable SSL for it, but. Uh, I can't connect over SSL because of that, because I think I need to generate those in Postgres for sure. Uh, yeah, I agree. Authentication, yep, it's more of an auth cert than trust cert. Agreed, agreed. And so I think you have to generate that from Postgres or supply your own. Uh, and maybe maybe you could do that. Maybe you could do that with Let's Encrypt and then, uh, I'm sorry, with, with Cert Manager, create a secret from that and then reference that secret uh, with Postgres, maybe. Uh, let me know if you figure it out, because I, I would love to do that, too. I took the easy route. <laughs> I took the easy route. said, uh, yeah, I'll just connect to it directly. I'll do, you know, kube control port forward to get to it and uh, connect that way. My services can connect to it just fine, but, I mean, out of cluster. Out of cluster. Sup, nerds. Bill Nash, how's it going? Sup, nerds. How's it going? Good day. Uh, Techno Tim, thanks for sharing the material you have been creating over the last few years. Really appreciate it. Good day. No problem at all. <laughs> no problem at all. I'm just just document what I'm doing and uh, things that I things that I do that I think are fun enough or that people would also think are fun. Then I share it. <laughs> there are so many things, though, I want to share that I can't like there. They're, I'm, I'm sure this is what TikTok or shorts are for. But I have so many like little ideas of like, yes, this is cool. I would love to share it. I wish I just recorded that. There are so many times when that happens that like i'm just like oh, i can't i can't do that every single time I, w I would love to i would love to and maybe maybe that's what stories are for on youtube but does anyone still use those i have no idea uh but i should i should start quick capturing a lot more informal moments because it's it's pretty fun uh all the communication to internal to the cluster all the communication is internal to the cluster 
Uh, Cyber Knight, has anyone uh, self-hosted their own GitOps repos, GitLab or something similar? Yeah, and externalize them. If so, to use SSH or HTTPS, looking for thoughts. Cyber Knight, um, so I haven't done. No, I haven't. Uh, I do have an idea of what I would do. I, yeah, I, I would do SSH. Um, yeah, I would always do Git over SSH. I wouldn't do Git over, or uh, I wouldn't, yeah, use HTTPS, even though, you know, that seems to be, that's, fine in normal communication but for s for for your git repos repos i would use ssh uh, that's what i do hands <laughs> down i i mean i would ask p other people what they're doing but you know that's that's what public uh services do to ssh uh because then you're not depending on a password uh, username and password you're depending on a key right that hopefully only you have and that you could get rid of really quick and create another or add multiple right uh babe tell it got you i was thinking i uh having some external services uh yeah like kate's postgres as well maybe that's just a bad idea no no that's fine too no you you can absolutely you can absolutely you can expose it through a load balancer funny i just post i just posted this i don't know a week or two ago in discord on on creating a a tcp load balancer for po postgres uh with traffic and if you just search i think those keywords you'll you'll see my example of how to do it but yeah, if you go that route, yeah, you're right. Uh, unless you trust the network that you're on, you, you'll you'll you, you'll want to secure it some way, right? You'll want to secure that traffic some way. Otherwise, I think it, the the credentials get sent in like basic auth or something, you know. <laughs> so if someone's running Wireshark on your on your network, they might see it. Uh, I have not, but I would use both. Uh, yeah, I agree. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah, yeah, absolutely use HTTPS to ex expose the web piece. Uh, but for Git, I would use SSH. Um, maybe a coding project that I've used Freebase for free public CD. I saw a coding project that used Supabase for... Oh, yeah, I saw... Yeah, you were talking about this. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I haven't used it. I haven't used it. I've, uh, I've, I've used other things like it. I mean, it's, it's basically the open source Firebase. It's kind of like a self-hosted Firebase type experience, developer experience. It'd be like, hey, if, 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 if you want to self-host a platform for developers to like request their own databases and stuff like that, you know, basically a Firebase kind of sort of thing. <laughs> basically, yeah, uh, a hosting platform more so than just the database itself. Uh, the data server, uh, was really gay. Hey, Fi Buzz. Hey, Fizz, Fizz Buzz, Fizz Buzz. Sorry, oh, I like it's Fizz Buzz, but it's fizz, like physics. Uh, real quick, a duck named Ducky. Hey, hey, thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Hey, thanks. I'm glad you liked it. Um, to be honest, I, I, I liked it too. <laughs> I mean, do I like all my videos? Sure. Uh, but that one was especially. Uh, I, I, I liked it for maybe reasons you didn't, but I got to do a lot of things that I haven't done before, like. A little more storytelling, a little more traveling. Wasn't all screens, wasn't tutorials, and I uh, got to interview some someone too. That's, that's something I really haven't done in my videos, which was pretty cool. So yeah, I, I, I met Will not too far from my house and got to interview him too. So yeah, I got to do a lot of cool stuff, learned a lot of stuff, um, and uh, but it was it was super fun to do. Data center, no, I got you, I got you, I got you. Bill Nash, Tim yells <laughs> his normal speaking voice. Because he used to have a home lab. Bill Nash, ah, I still have one. I still have one. It's still a home lab. <laughs> I need that meme. No, I no, I, I, I for some reason I, I I yell. Like this microphone makes me yell. It's kind of like my dad when he's on the phone. My dad, no matter what, no matter where he's at, he is yelling on the phone. Hello? Hey, Timmy, how are you? You know, I'm just like, <laughs> whoa. <laughs> uh, I think I got that from my dad. But for some reason this microphone just makes me want to yell. And so yeah. But I know what you mean. You could have said like, because your home lab used to be like in your office. I still have one. It's still down there. I, I will go take pictures. I'm, I'm gonna post it later on and say, yes, I still have a home lab. <laughs> it is still the exact same. It just didn't have the two servers I wasn't using anymore. <laughs> uh, I get it though, Bill Nash. I, I, thank you, thank you, thank you. I deserve it, I deserve it. I love it, I love it. I love it when people uh, poke fun, it's fun. Ah, uh, Jan, uh, Han, it's either Jan, Y, B, uh, I'm so bad at this. I'm going to go with Jan, Jan, Y, B. I saw, I, I know there's no way I'm right. Uh, have a colo for many years already is, uh, are, 
you've had a colo for many years already is really nice. No, I, I think so too. You know, one of the things that, um, that, uh, so, so a couple like pluses is like, you know, these are probably obvious to you guys, but things, you know, I, as I started to think about them, like, I was like, Hey, don't have to worry about the power kind of sort of going out at my house. It flickers every now and then I have a UPS, but here, like kind of in my neighborhood, it's happened a f couple summers out of, I don't know, eight summers where everyone used their AC at the same time. Some power line in my backyard catches on fire really did. And no one has power for eight hours. Like that's happened a couple times. So I don't have to worry about that as much anymore. Uh, networking too. I, I, I don't have to worry about like bandwidth. Uh, not that I really do here because I have half a gig up and down. It's more, more than enough what I do. But then my IP, my, my, my residential IP doesn't get added to a lot of people's like block list, which is going to kind of be nice after my ISP finally rotates my IP address, which I don't think they do anymore. It's not like it used to be, at least with my ISP. I, I've had the same IP address, I think, the whole time I've lived here. I'm like, don't you guys, you know, rotate uh, IP addresses? It used to be as simple as unplugging my modem for about 60 seconds and I get one, but they don't rotate mine. Um, and then, you know, heat, noise, power. Those are all nice. And, it, and, and I don't want to think, I mean, it's not power like, I still have the same carbon footprint. Like I feel bad saying, oh, I don't have to worry about power. I do, I still have the same carbon footprint. It's just that that energy bill isn't appearing <laughs> on my bill. So I hate to say like, oh yeah, it's great for power because I can use as much as I want. That that that, that just doesn't sound right. Uh, but all things being equal, I was going to use that power anyways if I turned those servers on in my house and they're pretty efficient as is so. But yeah, it's, it's fun. TD515, at the moment, do you have your true NAS on bare metal now? Yeah, yeah, good question. Uh, what day is it? <laughs> I'll tell you. No, this is a great question. Now it's it's now it's back to bare metal. What, is it going to stay this way? Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but now it's back to bare metal. I think in my last true NAS video that I, that I talked about, like ZFS and all these things that I learned about it and how to configure it, is when I switched back to bare metal. Like, I was... I was uh, I was virtual for, uh, I don't know, four, four years ish. Um, and uh, it was great. Uh, but then I needed more drives and the host machine didn't have enough drives and I didn't want to run my disk shelf anymore. And then I got an HL 15. So I was like, yeah, sweet. Going back to bare metal. That could change again in the future. Who knows? Who knows? Uh, but I, I, I enjoy being bare metal because of the reboots, only because of the reboots, because now I can actually patch my Proxmox servers and I don't have to like really schedule it with home. Like I'm not like, okay, is anyone using the network? Anyone, me or my wife, is anyone using file shares? Is anyone, you know, running Plex right now? Nope, is anything recording on Plex? Nope, okay, so I can reboot it. Like I don't have to think about that anymore. Although Plex is on there, eh, I, at least I don't have, I don't have two things I need to care about. Uh, you know, Proxmox plus TrueNAS uh, services all being on one. But anyways, yeah, bare metal. Uh, it's great. It's great so far. But it, it was great. It was great on. Uh, it was great uh, virtualized. I mean, I virtualized it uh, both on the free BSD version and on the scale version. You, if your next question is, are you on BSD or scale? Uh, scale all the ways. Ever since scale came out, I jumped on it, because because uh, uh, because Linux, <laughs> no other no other great reason uh, because Linux and because you know because it was virtualized at the time too. And I wanted the QEMU guest agent on there too, which was a big reason why I wanted the Linux version to come. Now that doesn't matter anymore. Anyways, Ruan Becker, how's it going? Sup, Tim? Uh, on my way back from KubeCon Europe. Yeah, I saw a lot of tweets about it. Sitting in Frankfurt airport and watching your stream. Hey, how's it going? Uh, Frankfurt, yeah, awesome. Well, how's it going? Frankfurt, Germany. Uh, Via Stas Bet there. How, how was the weather there? Uh, B Gates, uh, no, it's 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 past day there. I think it's like ten or eleven at night there. Uh, guten Guten, oh wait, Abend is day. Guten Nacht, Guten Nacht. I don't know. I'm probably saying something really bad. Anyways, via das Bett there. <laughs> Viel Glück on getting home. Good luck on getting home. <laughs> That's about all I got. But uh, yeah, good good to see you, man. And uh, I think you changed your avatar pick. Looking looking pretty looking pretty sharp there. Oh, okay, MDNS. Oh, yeah, we're going back to there. Uh, forgot that was a thing. Probably uh, probably the target. Oh, thank you. Thank you. So this is this is what we're talking about. So probably the target, Drake, Drake, Star Dragon, like the name. Thank you. So 
this was going back to me saying on MDNS, like, oh, I, I don't know if I said it on the, the source network or the target network, and you're saying the target, so awesome. I have a bunch of stuff to disable right after the stream then because I enabled it on both, but I never tested it, so I'm, I'm definitely going to test it. Why not? I, I hate to have, uh, yeah, I hate to have things out there lingering. That's one thing I have had out there lingering. IGMP, thank you. Yes, IGMP. I always, I always want to say IMGP, but no, it's IGMP. Thank you. You need an MDNS repeater on devices on the main network because, yeah, MDNS packets from the other VLAN. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, IG, uh, IGMP snooping. All right. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Uh, we need to consider security when sticking things on the same network. Good day. We need to consider. Yeah, I agree. I agree. So this is going back to, hey, hey, co-locate, you know, your your, your, your IoT devices, like like your whatever your Chromecast device is with, with your main devices. I, I totally agree. Uh, let's see, Joe Joker World. Uh, how to start using learning VLANs without a dedicated hardware, but Proxmox VE with one nick. Ooh. If you have Proxmox VE, you have everything you need to learn VLANs. Okay, so here's what I would do. This is a great question, because this is exactly how we used to test network firewalls when I used to distro hop on network firewalls a long time ago. Great question, Joker Wild. Great Joker Wild. I'm gonna call it Joker Wild, even though it says Joker World. So if you have Proxmox, first thing I would do is I would create a, a virtual machine and uh, it would be PFSense. I would create that virtual machine of PFSense and I would create two virtual NICs on it. Um, create two virtual NICs on it. And both of those NICs are, are uh, one's, one's connected to, <laughs> I don't know, a bond. And the other one's connected to whatever your other network is, your internal network. Uh, but I would connect the WAN Nick to your internal network, uh, as if as if you got a DHCP address from your local network, but make that the WAN port, so that you get your firewall and you get your NAT, and then create another whatever Nick or bond connects to a new network on Proxmox, and then I would create one more guest machine underneath there, Windows, whatever. Uh, you you probably want something with the GUI so you can you can find your way around, uh, Windows, Ubuntu, whatever you want to do. And then connect it to that network as if it's a guest from that network. So basically, you're 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 basically natting or creating a firewalled off section of your network that only the one guest can get to. And then from there, you can you can do whatever you want. You can configure and test VLANs on, on PFSense. You can configure your VLANs on PFSense, and then on your guest machines in VMware, you can assign or a tag or a VLAN ID to those machines so it can actually communicate with with your PFSense device. So I think if you have Proxmox, uh, uh, if you have Proxmox alone, you could test all of this, I think, by yourself uh, without any additional hardware because you get to, I mean, maybe you're using PFSense at home. I don't know. Uh, if you are, great, because then you get to test it out without destroying your whole entire network. Uh, but you get to play with it from there. You can create, <laughs> you can create multiple machines. You could put multiple guest machines on on different vlans you, you could do all that within proxmox and not have to touch your network at all and you can kind of figure it out from there you can even start to create firewall rules oh okay so i create firewall rules between these two vlans with pfsense can i ping this can i do this can i do that and then once you want to want you know then once you're like okay i'm going to do this for real then you know how to do it so anyways yeah you, you can totally do it the one th nick thing on proxmox you could totally do it uh, the one Nick thing is kind of throwing me off, but you can because you would have a LAN IP. Yeah, you'd have a LAN, you'd have DHCP for that Proxmox. Uh, sorry, you'd have a DHCP address for PFSense on the WAN port, which would pick up a local IP address, but you just treat that like a public IP address and then create downstream of that on the LAN, connect it to another virtual network where you have your guest and your whole entire virtualized network and your virtualized guests that are then double natted basically. Uh, but then that gives you a way to, to test out a firewall. Yeah, I like it. I like it. <laughs> I like it. So going back to what I was saying, this is exactly how I tested network firewall appliances all the time. Like I, I would distro hop all the time on network firewalls. I thought, Ooh, you know, PFSense, is there something better? Mono wall. Ooh, that's, that's kind of cool, but mm, doesn't have a great UI uh tomato uh opn sense open sense whatever untangle uh smooth wall ip cop i used to do it all the time 
and I got tired of taking down my network, and then I was like, why don't I just virtualize all this stuff? Like, why am I taking my network down like every other day? Because I, I think that the next distribution of a firewall is better. Sophos XG, I did it the same way. I actually ran Sophos XG for, I don't know, a year uh, virtualized as my virtualized inside of inside of Proxmox before switching back to PFSense. So anyways, yeah, great, great question. Uh, you could do it all. You could do it all with Proxmox and you can learn it all there. Uh, and then when you're ready to go to production, your home production, then you just duplicate what you just did. Hey, uh, server parts. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. And Noma, Noma DM. Thanks for the follow. Appreciate it. Welcome. Welcome. Uh, let's see. I, I'm, oh man. Uh, Xavier Steve. Well, Amazon has no problem <laughs> auto renewing my prime membership payment. Yeah, I totally agree. I totally agree. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. They're, they're going to raise the price. They're going to auto renew, but will they let you auto renew your prime sub? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Oh yeah, I, I totally agree. All right, y'all. Uh, I am getting close to time. I do wanna, I, I do wanna make sure. I do see a lot of chit chat. I do wanna make sure I kind of address uh, some questions that people have and make sure that I don't skim over ones that uh, uh, I think maybe Power World Memory Lake just is small. Uh, sorry, <laughs> I do have to wrap it up, but I, I'm, I'm kind of looking for one that's like. Uh, uh, I, this is probably going to be hard. This is exactly what I, ooh, 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 jeez. This is, this is a hard one. Like, why did I click on one? But I heard, I saw, how would you explain? I'm probably going to do a terrible job. So just, just foreshadowing right here. How would you explain Kubernetes to someone that has done stuff with VMs, but never went the Docker route? Love your vids. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> um, so, so, so I'm going to explain something, but I'm going to preface this whole thing with there is a there is a YouTube video that's like explaining Kubernetes to kids. It's like it's a, it's like and I'm not trying to, to 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 doubt your intelligence at all. It's actually great. And when I watched it, I learned a lot of new stuff too. But there's like this there's this storybook driven like children's book story type of way to explain Kubernetes. I do think they tend to go a little bit too much in detail. Um, but anyways, that that's a great start. That's a great start because that, that'll explain it a lot better than I could. The way I'll explain it is, oh gosh, this might take a while. With Kubernetes, uh, so you've never done containers. So containers are really just kind of separating out processes and segmenting them by themselves. So let's just say you have a web server. I'm gonna say Nginx, right? And so you're able to take this process Maybe pile some other things into it, like configuration, uh, files, and whatever you want. You package that up in a package, and then you run it on the host. And that's containerization. There's networking. There's a whole bunch of stuff involved, but that's not really important when it comes to Kubernetes because it gets a little bit crazier on those aspects further. But let's say you have that container, right? You have this one container, this one process, and you want and and, and with Docker you only have one server. You can have Swarm take swarm out of it because it's pretty much dead <laughs> and I, I mean that in the best of ways um so you have this one process you want to run it say uh, on, on multiple machines right let's say you have two servers and now you have this one process this one nginx container this process and you want to have it run on one machine at least one on one machine so how do you do that you know with with the current way like if you didn't have docker you would just go and install it on that one machine you would set up all of these tasks to make sure that the system was alive that you would have all these checks in place to make sure that hey it was started and some health checks in place uh, but if that server went down and and it was no longer there you know how would you get it onto the other server you know and so this is kind of where kubernetes comes in so kubernetes basically says like it, it, it's a big state machine and you tell kubernetes what you want the state to be it's a desired state so in this case with this one kubernetes process this one container i would tell kubernetes hey here's this one process this one container i want at least one anywhere doesn't matter just give me at least one and so kubernetes says okay i have two three servers i have some space over here well, I'll just spin it up here, right? And so now it's on who knows which server, but you don't care because you said, I want at least one running and make sure at least one running. 
So now if that process dies, Kubernetes is going to say, hey, I don't have at least one. Go back. Yeah, I need at least one. Boom. There's your one. That, that server dies. That whole server dies. You just pull the plug on it. Kubernetes eventually will say, when it analyzes its state, it'll say, hey, uh, I need at least one. I do have one, but that's not available. So let's now take that one and put it up on this other server, one of your other two that you have going on. And so really at the end of the day, Kubernetes is a big state machine that helps you orchestrate your containers. And the containers is kind of what I've explained. I, I don't want to go too much in detail. So it'll help you orchestrate containers. It's container orchestration. <laughs> it's more than a framework. Engine, I don't know what to call it, state machine. But then on top of that, you have a whole bunch of other, I don't want to go and say the like controllers, but you have controllers. You have a whole bunch of different ways to do the things you normally know how to do to like in, in, in the uh, non-cloud of non, non cloud native way. So when you say, when people say cloud native, they're really talking about Kubernetes. And so Kubernetes has, you know, it's it, a lot of the same paradigms, a lot of the same paradigms. And I think I talked about this a little while ago. Um, and you just have to kind of map those paradigms to what you know, to how you do it in Kubernetes. Like, for instance, you know what a cron job is. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. But it's just a scheduled task, right? You're telling the system to run a certain thing at a certain time. And, you know, in, in Linux, it's called cron. A lot of, lot of Nix-like system, it's called cron. Well, in Kubernetes, it's, it's called a batch job. Same thing. But you just define it in YAML and you give it uh, something to run and when to run it, some other things you can figure, it's going to do the same thing. Services are the glue and the networking between different pods um, and so on and so forth. Storage, so it's all there if you look. Networking's there, it's all there. Um, and so at the end of the day, it really, it's just, it's, uh, it's a way to help you run your services uh, maybe highly available, but to guarantee the run of your services or processes across the whole entire cluster, all right? And that's where it gets really awesome is because you can start to scale your cluster. You can scale it dynamically. And this is where it gets really cool is because then like your each machine doesn't matter that much anymore. If you think of your current world, you're not doing Docker. So you're going to sudo apt install whatever nginx. You're going to have to do some configuration stuff on your own manually, right? You could script that all out with Ansible. But at the end of the day, if that machine dies, you're you're kind of like, oh crap! I gotta I gotta spin up another machine. I gotta get Nginx on there. I gotta get my configuration back on there. And there's a lot of lot of work you need to do to 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 make sure that that's running. In Kubernetes, it's not that way. In Kubernetes, you could unplug a whole entire machine, you know. And if they're clustered in a cluster, they're just gonna say, okay, well, I'm I'm just gonna I'm just gonna run on this machine. You can auto scale your cluster too. You could say, hey, when when I get it, uh, you know, when when Nginx, the process of Nginx, you know, I, you could set up thresholds to say, if Nginx, you know, spikes the CPU for this long, run more replicas. And then if the, you know, and so it will spin up more replicas and say, oh, we need more Nginx. And so you could, you know, you can do it automatically. Uh, for auto scaling, but if you didn't, you want to do it manually. You're like crap, you know, it's it's Black Friday. We're getting hammered. Uh, what do we do with Kubernetes? What do you do? You just create, you just join more nodes to the cluster. You increase your replicas of Nginx, and boom, you just like scale. And you didn't have to do much. You didn't have to do much. And so, I don't know. I, I'm probably not explaining right, that great. But at the end of the day, you know, it's it's this mentality of you know treating treating, you know, like old don't want to say old but cloud native way you treat everything like cattle you don't you have lots of them they're all kind of the same if one dies you just get another one it's kind of morbid uh but the non-cloud of way they say you, you you treat them like pets so you there's a lot of care and feeding you love this thing you you check in on it often you you probably give it a name um and if it dies you're sad <laughs> not with kubernetes it's all cattle, and you, they can all be replaced. So, anyways, yeah, yeah there's, uh, uh, there, 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 like I said, there's, there's a great video if you just Google it, like you know, Kubernetes for kids or something. And I think it has a big giraffe on it. If you just watch that video, I think you'll kind of get the clue uh, of, of how it can help. But um, 
Not the greatest at explaining it. Uh, I, c I can diagram it pretty good. Uh, it's hard to do hand wavy stuff and, and talk about it because there's just so much to it. And once you once you start learning it, you just start learning more and more. Like I don't know everything there is to know about Kubernetes, and I've supported you know multiple clusters for year uh, years years and years, and I run three clusters at home. There's things I still don't know or still don't fully understand. Uh, and so it's you know it's 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 a pretty complicated beast. But I I always say this. I, I think it's a valuable skill to learn, and uh, I I think any time you spend with it is is not time wasted. Because uh, like the you know a lot of the world is, is running on Kubernetes now so, but you know, then again a lot of it is not too. And will it be around forever? I don't know. Uh, who knows? You know, a lot of people say it's it's too complicated. It's too too granular. You know, why why not? Why have a state machine that you still got to interact through an API? Why can't why can't you use natural language and you know interact with this thing? Maybe that's where some other shims or stuff could help. Uh, and who knows? Maybe maybe this won't be around in five years. But it's it's been around for a while, and it's pretty popular. So it it would take something really big to replace it. So stateful sets, yeah. Don't even get in there. Stateful sets, yeah. I, I see stateful sets misused a lot. I see stateful sets misused a lot. So 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 big blue blade brings up stateful sets, uh, yeah. And uh, stateful sets is 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 really saying one pod per node basically saying run this on every single node no matter what you have five run run it on every you have 90 run it on every so sometimes i see people use that because they just want three replicas and they want them spread out across three rep across three nodes so they're just like oh staple set and it's like well yeah that works in this case but <laughs> If you go to 90 nodes, you don't want 90 instances of this thing running. So yeah, I mean, there, see, there are quirks like that. Like, yeah, you, me, uh, you know, I don't know, five, six years ago, I'd be like, I want this on every node. How do I do it? And I'd be like, sweet, staple set. And then I'd be like, oh, I just scaled up to 20 nodes. Why is this thing? Oh, daemon set. Sorry, daemon set. You're right. Yeah, see, exactly, exactly. Thank you, thank you. Daemon set. Yeah. See, exactly. There's a whole bunch of terminology. You gotta know, <laughs> and you gotta remember. Uh, but I, I think that, like, I, I think you know, if you can always map it back to something non-cloud native, I think that helps a lot. I think that helps a lot. But hey, uh, primordial, pre, preimmortal, preimmortal. Hey, thank you so much, and thanks for the correction on there. Some, sometimes people don't say anything, and then I, I talk and I gab forever, and I'm like, oh man, I was totally saying the wrong thing when I review it. So I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Um. All right, last one. The last one. I see what happens when I say, you know, I'm kind of going to end on time. 420 again. I'm, I'm pretty good at this 420 thing when I'm streaming. Uh, <laughs> let's see. Uh, all right, last one. We're going to pull this up. I have no idea what it is. I saw K3S in there. 90. 902 PE Gaming. Uh, Techno Tim, do you have a perfect K3S build tutorial? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like I handpicked this one. <laughs> it's like I handpicked this one. Uh, this much hardware. These things installed to Prime, then run an Ansible playbook. It, it's it's like I handpicked this one. <laughs> uh, 902 PE Gaming, if you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, you probably don't, uh, which I'm glad you asked. Yes, I do. Yes, I do. I do have a video on that. I'm so glad you asked. No, I do have a video on it. It's kind of a long-winded video, but the moral of that video is I created a playbook. Uh, it's in GitHub. It's open source. I just created a new release yesterday <laughs> a paid actor that's right that is a paid actor ah uh, totally totally first time chatter too oh man better check uh, the the creation date on that account i'm kidding i'm kidding i'm kidding uh, some people joke because they know that i created this thing you don't know and that's fantastic i'm glad you don't know because i would love to tell you about this thing that i started telling you about so i have this thing i, I created a K, uh, k3s ansible playbook that creates a highly available k3s cluster automatically for you all you got to do is build three virtual machines, get three IPs of those virtual machines, and click go. You got to run Ansible. You got to, you know, a little bit of prep, uh, but I cover all of that in my documentation, and I cover all of that in the video. Um, as far as like, hey, hey, as far as like the perfect, you know, the perfect size for a machine and the, 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 the perfect specs, I mean, I'm just going to blanket statement here, you know, most 
most uh, uh, so, so, so you have servers and you have workers. Servers are going to be where the control plane is, how you interact with Kubernetes, where all your kube control commands go and whatnot, as well as where your database is hosted. If, if you're doing the etcd version, that's the only version I support. I think that's the version you should run. Um, so those servers, I, I would just go, I mean, they're, they're pretty easy going depending on how big it goes. You could give those two or four cores, pretty lightweight, put them on SSDs. Uh, you can go eight gigs of RAM. That, that it doesn't take a lot to run a K3S cluster, at least your worker, uh, your servers. When it comes to your workers, so those are the, the nodes. Whenever I say nodes, no, I mean servers. The worker nodes are the ones that do the work. They're the ones that run the things you wanna run, right? So the servers only run Kubernetes stuff. The worker nodes only run the stuff you wanna run. And really when it comes to those, you know, it does depend. You know, are you gonna run Plex on one? Tons of resources, you know, tons of resources. I, I, I can't tell you what the spec is to build, you know, for that virtual machine. Or are you gonna run like Nginx, you know, a couple of web servers and maybe WordPress and a couple of other things, you know, pretty light for the most part. But I would say what I do, what I do when I create a new cluster uh, for my workers, four cores, 16 gigs of RAM, 20 gigs of drive space. I do that every time. I just do it every time. Cause then I know I'm just like, okay, this is my standard, right? 16 gigs of RAM, four cores, 20 gigs of disk space. That's probably overkill. It probably is overkill. But I know in my head, like, if I'm building a cluster, I'm gonna have 30, 40, 50 workloads in here. Another nice thing about Kubernetes, I'll stop after this. But th the other nice thing about Kubernetes, when, as we're talking about nodes and scaling out, is, you know, the, 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 way you, the way you take on more compute or more drive space or more RAM is not by adding RAM and drive space to those individual machines, it's by adding another server. And so that's that's what's really nice about Kubernetes too. You know, non-cloud cloud native way, you're like, yep, got to, yep, I'm out of RAM, got to put some more RAM in it. You know, oh, I'm out of disk space or, oh, I'm, you know, I'm out of compute. The CPUs are getting hit pretty hard. We should upgrade our CPUs or ask the virtualization people to give me more cores. No, but Kubernetes is just like, just add another server to the cluster, boom. And then it'll just level out. So anyways, uh, anyways, yeah, it's uh, it, it's super fun. I, I uh, if you want, it, it, so going back to my K3S cluster last time. So, so going back to my K3S cluster, if you want to learn Kubernetes but not learn the pain of setting it up HA, that's the way to go. That's the way to go. If you want to know the pain of setting it up HA, I have videos for that too. I have videos for that too. Uh, all right, last one. I said last one, but this is the last one because this is a follow-up. Uh, so you'd recommend virtualizing the hardware and then running a stack on that. Personally, that's what I do. Uh, you can run in bare metal. It's absolutely fine. A lot of people like it that way, but I think that's more of the advanced use cases only because they've done it before and they were like, okay, well, I don't need a hypervisor in between. I know Kubernetes really well. I would recommend you know, using a hypervisor, virtualizing those because you're gonna get snapshots, because you're gonna get you know ways to back things up. Um, you could take a snapshot right before you did some major change and, and revert back to it really easily. Uh, plus then if you get into VLANing, it makes VLANing really easily on all your guest machines because you can assign you know a VLAN per NIC per guest. Uh, so, I mean, again, those are advanced use cases. I always do because the way I look at it, the one or 2% overhead at most you get from running a hypervisor is well worth the functionality you get from a hypervisor, which is all the things I just mentioned. You know, you could scale your RAM, you could increase your disk easily, you could add more cores easily, you know, you could do all of that super duper easy, as well as snapshots and backups, because those are kind of important too. So anyways, oh man, oh man, oh man, you're, you're throwing, oh, you're th oh, you're throwing down now. <laughs> yeah, Nomad. Yeah, I know. I, I, I just, yeah, no, yeah, I agree that Nomad is an alternative. How popular it is, who knows? <laughs> but yeah, I, I totally agree. Oh, I would love to talk, talk on this topic too, but it is well over time. Hey, y'all, uh, thank you so much. Man, you guys are bringing up Kubernetes stuff on the way out. Um, usually it's like 3D printer or printers in general where I'm like, okay, it's way over now. <laughs> Anyways, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, thank you so much. There was there was so much. Uh, there were there were lots of subs 
resubs, follow, I greatly appreciate it. Thank you so much, I really appreciate it. Um, thank you all for, for commenting. There's lots of comments, lots of great topics. I love talking about this stuff. Uh, this is the basically the one time a week where I get to talk about this vocally and not in my head or in Discord. So I, I, I love this time and I hope you did too. So anyways, I will be back. Uh, I, I will be back here on Twitch uh, next Saturday, working on my next YouTube thing. Some stuff hidden back there. Look, I, I actually put a shirt over the thing that's back there because that is absolutely cannot, that is cannot say anything about it. And now I'm making a big deal about it. So you'll see, it's coming. Um, if you have questions for me or things I didn't answer or things I gave the wrong answer to or uh, you just want to chat some more, hop in our Discord server. We have a Discord full of, I think we're almost getting close to 10,000 people. Lots of people you see in this chat. Uh, lots of people you don't see in this chat. Uh, they're great people, super helpful. We have lots of channels for everything. We're almost getting a wordworking channel now because of Xavius D, but we might change the 3D uh, printer one to makers and, and uh, be a little more encompassing. That's TBD. Uh, I, like I said, I'll be back uh, next week. Uh, if you need me, ping me anywhere. Uh, so, hey, have a, have a great rest of the day. Have a great Saturday and be good to each other. Take care, folks.